say to all the parents in the room, we did it! Yes! We're here. My name is Julie Kent, mother of Thomas Kent. So I firstly have to acknowledge Thomas Kent in Year 12. I know it's a bit embarrassing having Mummy up here talking. So thank you for being okay about that and knowing that I will be sharing a few stories about you. So thank you. It's been an honour for me to be asked to address the congregation this evening to celebrate our journey here at Mount Maria College. We started this journey like I guess a lot of us as parents with a lot of fear. We were a family coming into this community, a family that was moving through grief with the loss of my husband, the boy's dad. We had autism along for the ride with Thomas and we were unsure, we were scared. We'd heard about this wonderful school, Mount Maria, after we'd been at Petrie State School and so on my first journey through the college to, to be given a tour of the college, I started getting those signs that this would indeed be the community for us. The first sign came when we walked into the home economics block and I think it was Mr Barbo at the time had just baked this chocolate cake and we walked in and there was a great celebration from the teachers and the, the people in the room about the smell of this chocolate cake and how wonderful this chocolate cake was and they were saying to Thomas, can you smell the chocolate cake? But you see there were six fans above us going like this, so immediately Thomas is looking at the fans. <laughs> And Thomas goes, fan number three, it's set on winter instead of summer. <laughs> and in that moment, I knew we were in the right place because at no point was there any distraction from the fans. There was a celebration of his attention and that he noticed the fans. There was no distraction back to the chocolate cake and what he should be smelling. There was a celebration that in fact he noticed the fans and he was right. And that made me breathe out a little. And then we came up here into the Colby Sports Centre. There was a group of students and they were playing um, basketball right here on this court. Thomas kind of walked in and as he walked in, he went over to the students and I wrote a poem about what happened in that moment. And this was my second sign that we were in the right community. He walked up to the kids on the basketball court with such confidence, just like he'd been taught. I was surprised to see him go and do it. On his own, I'd so often see him sit. I held my breath what felt like forever. Please let him play. For him, this is just so clever. How would he get their attention? What would be their reaction? He clapped his hands and he opened them wide, inviting them to throw a pass out to the side. I was still holding my breath, almost blue in the face. The pass was thrown in exactly the right place. His face lit up as he went for the shot. He missed, but you see it mattered not. The game most was definitely already won when you pass the ball and you welcome my son. So thank you. And that was that moment when I knew that we were in the right place. And so the journey continued at Mount Mary College, Petrie, and you as a community and as students and these cohorts would teach me a big, teach me a big lesson as a parent about inclusion. Inclusion isn't something we talk about, it's something we do. Inclusion isn't about making him be like everybody else, it's about celebrating everybody's diversity, everybody's uniqueness, and about letting it shine out loud. And that's what I loved about coming to these events at Mount Maria College Petrie. At your awards nights of excellence, I would see each person walk up to the stage, and each person was a burst of colour. There was no beige in this school. And every unique burst of colour is celebrated and rejoiced, and that's true inclusion, and you would teach me that that it's about giving them a stage to stand on and be embraced on. And I would then, this would roll over into my life and home with Thomas as well. And I remember once we, my son was home, my oldest son, and the three of us as a family went up to see my dad out through Kingaroy Way. We always stopped at Kingaroy at McDonald's. We love a routine. So we stopped at McDonald's for our usual lunch. Jack and I went and got his, our lunch and we sat down at a table. Thomas got his lunch and sat at a different table. But you see, we had a lovely time. Thomas and I will often go out for morning tea. I sit there, he sits there. We have a great time together. You see, there was a time my ego would have wanted him to sit with us so we could get the perfect Instagram shot of the perfect family. But what you taught me is that this is the perfect family. My job as his parent is allowing him to have his stage for him to shine brightly on. And no matter how that makes me feel at the time. So I thank you as a community for teaching me that. He would progress through this school and eventually go into SVAP, the vocational program. I was concerned about year 11 and 12 because academic strengths wasn't Thomas's strengths, but you knew that. 
So you had this wonderful program. He would go and work at the coffee club one day a week. If you'd said to me, what would Thomas do, like to do at the coffee club? I said, would say out the back washing dishes. No, he loves the customers. It's just me, he doesn't like much. <laughs> so there, I, I have such joy when I watch Thomas out serving customers. I teach people on the you know, normal spectrum every day how to add extra sparkle and uniqueness into their service. So you can imagine my delight when I see Thomas serving his customers with such finesse and enjoy your drinks as he walks off out the back. And I see them smile as he does his job with such a wonderful uniqueness. And then, of course, he, he continues to progress. And now, for me, as we reach this stage, it is when I walk through my building at home and I get compliments from the people that live there and tell me what a fine young man Thomas is. How he stops to every person in the lift and has a conversation with them and asking about their day. This was a little boy who couldn't talk until he was four or five. So that makes me feel fantastic. And when I sneak in, accidentally sneak in to go to the toilet at the formal, and I see Thomas doing the nut bush, he dug up the nut bush, the bush is done. He did it so hard. <laughs> and when I see him take the macarena out of the macarena, I'm telling you, and I can't believe that this is my young man, my Thomas, achieving all of these things. So for all those moments for me, that's like a university degree, that's an OP one, that's a win. They say it takes a community to raise a child, but it took this community to help me raise mine. And for that I thank you. And to the Year 12 cohorts, you know, as an inspirational speaker, I get asked every day, Julie, how can I make a difference in the world? I want you to leave here today knowing that you have made a difference in the world, in each other's lives, with the way that you have interacted, and that difference will go on forever and ever. So I thank you for that. It may not go viral, it may not be, you know, a morning TV, but that doesn't mean it hasn't made a difference. You are heroes and sheroes in my life, and so is this whole Mount Maria College community. The teachers and the families, thank you so much for embracing us and making this such an amazing journey for us. I salute you and I thank you for having us. Thank you.